Uh, we're here today on the Harris County Civil Courthouse uh, with uh, the Honorable Judge Ken Wise. He is the judge for the 152nd Judicial District of Harris County. And uh, we're here today to talk about uh, all the wonderful new technology that exists in this courtroom and in all the courtrooms in the Harris County Civil Courthouse. Uh, judge Wise, uh, when, when did the uh, court system move to the new courthouse? Well, this building opened in March of 2006. On time and under budget, I'm glad to say. Okay. And the move occurred over a period of about a month, uh, and we were fully occupied in April of 2006. And I, I take it that all of the Harris County Civil Courts are, are now located in this building as opposed to different buildings as they have been in the past? True. Uh, the state district courts that hear civil cases are all in this building. The county civil courts at law are here in this building. The probate courts are here in this building, and the tax court is also here, as well as the district clerk and the county clerk. So everything uh, from the civil side except the family law courts are centralized in this one building? Correct. And how many, do you know how many courtrooms are in this building? I do. And there are 39, I'm going to have to recount that, but I think there are 39 available courtrooms, not all of which are occupied. We left some open courtrooms on the 15th floor, and then the 16th floor is reserved for a later build out if we need to. And now the first thing that uh, I noticed when I came in this building was that it was obviously, uh, in addition to being new and, and beautiful, uh, that there was uh, all kinds of new technology in the courtrooms themselves. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Uh, first of all, how did, how did the civil district courts collectively uh, decide that they were going to uh, implement and use uh, new media technology in the courtrooms? Well, one of the things that, that Harris County had lacked in our 1910 courthouse, which is, was the courthouse that most of the civil courts were in, uh, and indeed lacked in all the other courtrooms scattered around downtown as they were, was some sort of built-in technology system. And as the times changed, I'd say from about the 90s to now, uh, and trials started being conducted with using more technology, courtrooms began being built with technology systems already in them. Um, some sort of display screens, some sort of uh, ability to annotate, uh, et cetera, were being built into all the new courtrooms. So we knew that when, that an integral part of the courtrooms in this courthouse would have to be the technology. And we wanted, uh, we wanted something that would be very user friendly, that would be up to date, and also would expand as technology changes, as we all know that it does fairly rapidly. Uh, in the past, I'd, I'd drive up to the courthouse at 9 o'clock in the morning, I'd see these vans unloading with the TV machines and TVs and right. video players and all that kind of equipment. Uh, I take it that now that, uh, that kind of activity doesn't go on you anymore. Don't, you don't need that anymore. Okay, everything that you would need uh, for media presentation is, I take it, in, in the courtrooms? I would say yes. Anything that you would need to display, whatever you would like to display, we have provided. Now, who was, uh, can, you, can you tell us uh, who was actually involved in selecting the, the different types of media presentation devices that would be um, installed into the courtrooms? In 2004, uh, the facilities committee created a technology subcommittee, and I was named the chairman of that committee. And so our task was to uh, design the system. First of all, we had to learn about what was out there. Uh, then we had to design the system. And then we had to implement the system within the construction budget that we were given, uh, which is always a challenge, but we managed to pull it off. So I assembled a committee of district court judges, uh, county, uh, county court representative, and probate court representative, because all of the courtrooms are the same technologically. And we basically, and we of course incorporated the uh, information technology personnel from the county, since they're the ones that are going to have to maintain the system. And we worked with a couple of different consultants through a long process of, of looking at other courtrooms, I got to go to, to one of my first audiovisual trade shows, which was very interesting to learn about all the available um, technology, you know, gadgets, and also the, sort of the basic stuff that you need. I uh, went around and looked at a lot of different so-called smart courtrooms with integrated technology. And from that, the committee uh, sort of designed some specs that we wanted, so a lot of things that we wanted, and we also incorporated a lot of things that we didn't want. Some, some things we wanted to specifically exclude that were either tried and, and didn't work in certain courtrooms or uh, 
were really not very useful in certain courtrooms, so usability was a big part of our task, and, and we completed that work in 2005. So, and, and throughout this process, uh, what would what would you consider to be the two, say, primary goals of selecting what equipment you wanted in the courtroom, um, and, um, and, and and so forth? Um, I'm not sure there were just two, but I'd, I'd say the primary goal was ease of use. We wanted anyone to be able to walk into the courtroom and with little or no training use anything available, and I think we accomplished that. The, some of the secondary goals included we wanted the system to be stable. One of the things that is so frustrating with any kind of technology is that it breaks. And if, if a link in the technology chain, so to speak, breaks, often the system would be down. Uh, I saw some courtrooms where if a monitor went out, when you think of a monitor as being sort of at the end of the chain, it's merely projecting an image, but if a monitor went out, the whole system was not able to function. Well, that's something that we wanted to eliminate, and I think we did. Um, some of the other considerations that we had were uh, expandability. We can add on to this system at any time. We can change components in this system without affecting the other and the other thing is we wanted to retain the traditional look of the courtroom. All of the technolo technological components in this courtroom, the audiovisual components, can be removed if you want the courtroom to look you know, clean, sort of. Um, some of them can be removed. None of that affects the system. Uh, you walk into our courtrooms, uh, the, as you'll see later, the monitors in the jury box are not visible. The jury box looks like a regular jury box. The monitor in the witness stand is not visible unless you want it to be. Uh, the only thing that is that is semi-permanent is the control screen for the attorneys, but even that can be moved and to the side or wheeled out if necessary. So I think uh, we wanted to retain the look, traditional look of the courtroom, which we've done. Um, so so it, it sounds like the system that you implemented is, is, is a flexible system. If new technology comes out, you can add on a component. Absolutely. Uh, if something becomes obsolete, it goes out of the system. Absolutely. And, um, and that, uh, that allows for changes in technology that are ever uh, being developed. Um, now, who, who manages and maintains the media equipment that's here in the courtroom? The, the information technology uh, staff of, the, of Harris County does that for us. Okay, so the, the county actually has a staff of IT representatives that uh, if, uh, for example, your monitor goes out, or a monitor goes out, you call them, they can come up and fix it right away? Right. The district courts and the county courts are separate uh, administratively, but both both departments have information technology folks. And that reminds me of another great thing about the system. If the monitor does go out, to use your example, uh, we have spare parts. We swap the monitor, we send the broken monitor back, immediately replace it, uh, and, and interrupts the trial for minutes rather than days. And. Um, in terms of, of, of uh, parity among the courts, all the courts have this technology. Every courtroom in the building, with the exception of the tax court, has a full audiovisual system, uh, including the ceremonial courtroom. How frequently do you see lawyers, uh, since it's been about six months now, how frequently do you see lawyers using uh, the technologies? Is it, is, it, is it a situation where you see them using it in trial more, or, or do they use it in hearings as well? They use it in both. The hearings has been slower to, the use in hearings has been a little slower to start, but lawyers are finding out that it's so easy to use that they can use it effectively in certain hearings. In trials, I'd say uh, at least half the time some component is used at some point, uh, maybe more than half the time. Uh, and of course, a lot of that uh, obviously depends on the, on the desires of the lawyer. Some lawyers come in with their entire case, exhibits and all on a laptop computer, and they can present it from that laptop. Some lawyers still come in with boxes and boxes of documents, but they can still use this system to some degree uh, to provide the jury a little varied display of their evidence. And what, what would you, how would you characterize the impact, your perception of the impact this this, the use of this technology has on, say, a civil jury? I would characterize it this way. I would say that we now, more often, give the jury what they expect when they are presented or they're given a presentation. A trial, after all, is a presentation of facts through the evidence. I think uh, people, uh, certainly in the workplace these days, are used to the PowerPoint presentations, the image document presentations, the video presentations. 
even if you don't get that in the workplace, we're commonly called the TV generation. People watch a lot more TV uh, than they used to. You've got to you've got to give them a varied presentation. Before the technology, the best we could do is maybe a flip chart. Uh, but now we can we can vary the input that the jurors are receiving, and you can help the, the jurors that learn in different ways uh, understand your evidence better. For example, some jurors uh, might want to see a document on a computer screen. Maybe that's what they're used to looking at. And so they better understand that document when they can see it on the screen like they do in their daily lives. Uh, other jurors, would uh, they don't like to listen to an audio uh, reading of a deposition, for example. You can show them the video. Um, people get bored. If you show them the document on the computer screen 100% of the time, uh, they're not going to like it. Maybe you want to put it on the big screen. Uh, or maybe you want to hand them the paper. What's funny about this system, I've heard jurors comment on this, is that the more audiovisual you can use, the more relevant the old flip chart or the old piece of paper becomes because it becomes a different way to present the evidence. So it, um, the variety that you can achieve has kept keeping the jury more interested than they used to be out there. And, and that was my next question. I, I, I gathered that uh, the feedback that you have received from jury panels after a trial is, is generally favorable to this time. 100% positive. They love it. And the lawyers love it. People like to be entertained. They do, and they don't. They don't. They don't like to necessarily look at uh, a blackboard with uh, numbers being crunched. They, now you have the, the entire uh, audio visual presentation. Right? Okay. Um, in terms of the technology, that, that since it's been six months, uh, what would you like to see? more uh, used more frequently by uh, attorneys and, and what would you what do you think is the least uh, uh, desirable uh, thing that you've seen about this technology more frequently uh, there's not any one thing that I would like to see lawyers do more frequently I think um, probably and this is not a direct trial problem but I think lawyers are still not getting their arms around the efficiencies that the technology can create I mentioned earlier you can bring all your exhibits in on a laptop. Well, in some cases, that's a lot cheaper to do and a lot easier to use. So I'd say what I'd like to see done more frequently is lawyers spend a, the time, and it's not that much time, uh, but spend the time that it takes to master the use of the electronic documents. I think it will ultimately be cheaper for them. Um, so that's what I would say I would like to see more frequently. I think lawyers are using the technology about the right amount. Um, to, to help the jurors understand the case and not blow them over with an electronic circus, which is the, sort of the downside. Um, as far as negatives, I really don't have any negatives. Uh, the system is robust. It's worked, it's worked great. Um, it takes about five minutes to learn to use. Uh, sometimes lawyers take that five minutes, sometimes they don't. Um, but I don't really have uh, any negative thing to say about it. I think it's worked great. Right. 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 Are there any future plans for developing the technology or the system uh, further? There is nothing in this system that we need but we don't have. Uh, there was a conscious decision made by the committee not to include a computer within the system because of maintenance issues and ease of use issues. Anytime you incorporate a computer, you incorporate a lot of maintenance issues that go along with it. Uh, ultimately, that may be how this system ends up. We may, but there's nothing that we could do with a computer that lawyers wish we could do and we can't because we don't have it. Uh, so at this point, no. We'll wait and see where technology develops. Uh, there's always bigger, better screens coming out. There's always uh, new features that will be incorporated. The control panels that we're using are top of the line and they're, they're a lot smarter uh, they can do a lot more than we're asking them to do at this time. So I think through the control system there may be opportunities to expand the functionality of the system, but right now there's nothing that we wish we had that we don't. Well, you know, I really appreciate the opportunity, Judge, to, to come over and hear uh, firsthand from uh, one of the individuals uh, that was um, pivotal in bringing this technology to the courthouse and, and, and having it installed in a user-friendly format. Uh, and then I, what I'd like to do is uh, see if we couldn't uh, look at some of the technology and see how it works real briefly. Okay. Okay.